Meme. An element of culture or system of behavior that may be considered to be passed from one individual to another by non-genetic means. What the heck? One of the first things that we should probably cover is what is it about memes that people like so much? Why can you spend hours of your time looking for meme after meme and never really get tired of doing that? One of the main reasons that I think they're so universally loved and just everywhere is because of the huge amount and variety of topics that memes can cover from politics to movie references to just garbage, which is very fun. I like garbage. What may apply or one person may find funny, another person might not find that thing funny or vice versa. There's something for everyone and you can find something funny and maybe someone else won't get it. Just for the purpose of this video, I'm only gonna be talking about internet memes. So what is a meme? Where did they come from? Where did they go? Where did they come from? God, my joke. Richard Dawkins coined the term meme in 1976 in his book titled The Selfish Gene. He defined it as something that conveys the idea of a unit of cultural transmission or a unit of imitation. For all reasons and purposes, that is pretty much exactly what they are. The memes that we have today are very different from the memes that we had 20 years ago or are going to have 20 years in the future. Some memes may lose relevancy after a very small period of time, while others may keep on chugging along for a very long time or having small resurgences along the way. Memes are always changing, just like the culture. 200 years ago, a meme could have been something like a story told between families that could change over time. One of the first viral internet memes was the Dancing Baby meme from 1996. The purpose of this video, along with other video files in the package, was to showcase the CGI capabilities of the 3D animating software Character Studio. For whatever reason, people found this absolutely hysterical. It started to spread on emails, on web forums, even on TV shows. And the reason is just because it's original. 3D animation had just become open source, and hey, it's a dancing baby. Everyone wants to see that. It's... Pfft, you don't want to see a dancing baby? You... In the early 2000s, most memes were relatively simple. It would be a stock image of an animal or something, and then a really colorful background over here, and you smack them all together, and... You get a meme. A lot of the time, a meme could be captioned with multiple different things, and that's one of the biggest appeals of a meme. You can look at it, and you can be like, hey, I bet I can, I can, I can, I can be meme. I can, I can do the meme. And then you can do meme. Because multiple memes can be made out of just one meme template, it resulted in them spreading everywhere super fast. Memes like It's a Trap or Success Baby, they just, multiple memes could be made out of them. There's so much ideas that can be made out of just one thing. For instance, just, um, I killed someone today. Success. <laughs> for instance, with the it's a trap meme. Oh, you don't need to get me anything for my birthday. It's a trap! Oh, don't spell part A backwards. It's a trap! I bet that it's gonna be a trap. It's a trap! Memes were easy to make. Anybody could make them. You could share them with your friends. And as far as Richard Dawkins' explanation for a meme being a unit of imitation, that still checks out. All you need is one person to make a meme template and thousands of people from that point on will start making their own versions of that meme and it will still be imitations but with their own individual spin on that meme. Now one really, uh, I would say, extremely important meme that we need to look at is the Rickroll. We can talk about that later. Moving on. In early 2011, a video called Nyan Cat was uploaded to YouTube. It was pretty much an 8-bit cat with the body of a Pop-Tart that left behind a trail of rainbows as it flew around space. 
Now I know what you're thinking, just stop right there. It's an absolute masterpiece. This video just, for whatever reason, it just spread so fast, so darn fast, and I don't know why. Now, of course, a lot of meme templates will overlap over periods of time, but there was a great deal of meme templates that were very similar between 2004 and around 2014, I would say. Now, most of the reason for this is just because that was the culture of memes back then. That's just, that's what they found funny, and they're, they're pretty funny. Now, one of the classic examples of one of these memes that was around between these years was Advice Dog. You remember him. But, do you remember him, 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 and him? They were pretty much copies of Advice Dog, and they became known as Advice Animals. These things were around for so long, and there was so many of them. So many. And everyone found it funny. I mean, they had advice, they had kind of relatable stuff, and you could share them with your family. Like. I can hear the wheezing of a 48-year-old mom laughing at advice dog jokes. That was unspeakably loud. I Now usually when you're looking deeper into something, or at least attempting to do that, uh, there's always the person who says, No, don't look too in-depth into that. And you're always like, oh, okay. But this time, you gotta say, but I need to. Because memes are influenced by culture, it means that we actually do have something to read into. When we look back at memes made in a specific time, we can pinpoint the culture of that specific time. A lot of details can be gleaned from the memes of that time. It's actually a cycle of culture affecting memes and memes affecting the culture. Sometimes, especially in the last five years, political beliefs, issues, or things that are happening around the world can just creep right into memes. A few years ago, 14 year old me was scrolling through memes having a, having a great old time. And I came across a really funny meme of this old guy. Looked like he was from a retirement home, probably was. It was the, I'm once again asking for financial support meme. I was like, oh, that's so funny. And after a while, I, I heard the name of this guy from the retirement home. I was like, why is the guy from the retirement home running for president? And it turns out Bernie Sanders was a big political figure. And I had actually heard his name through memes, except I am very stupid. So I thought he was from a retirement home. <laughs> Another example of world issues creeping into memes is back in the good old days when you could be locked in your house doing nothing and it was still a choice. I was sitting on my bed watching a whole bunch of memes and I came across a meme and it was something like when uh, you hear that coronavirus is in Africa and it was like, I don't know. And I was like, hey, that's kind of weird. The next day, I found a few more memes like that. And I was like, okay, what the heck is coronavirus? But you know, I'm lazy. I didn't look it up. And then probably just a week later, I saw another meme about coronavirus. And it was when you're laughing at coronavirus memes and then you realize that it's an actual big deal. So I got on the internet, I looked it up. And sure enough, less than a month later, we went into lockdown. So pretty much I learned about what coronavirus was through memes. I mean, I, I I bet you that if I didn't look at any memes, I would, you know, I'd be like, mom, why do we have to stay inside? And she'd be like, I don't know, Joey. If, maybe if you looked at memes and told me, you we would all know, but now nobody knows. I mean, it's sure is a good thing I look at a lot of memes. Memes more or less act as time capsules for what was happening in that specific period of time. Even right now, I can look back at the memes that were in 2019 and just kind of think to myself, oh my goodness, we actually had hope back then, or oh my goodness, 
we actually thought that coronavirus would only last for like six months. Boy, were they wrong! It's actually one of the most obvious examples of the evolution of memes, and that's when you get to stand back and look at how memes have changed just in the last year. As I said before, a lot of styles do overlap over time, but what it seems like is in between the early 2000s to 2015, usually memes were just something funny or relatable with just a weird kind of twist on it. But as culture does, memes started to take a different direction to how they're made or what they're like. And this time it was a more surreal type of humor that people started using. In the future, entertainment will be randomly generated. Randomly generated? Randomly generated. These guys represent the hosts of the future. Unlike us, their humor can be truly randomly generated. Right guys? Why did the chicken cross the road? I don't know. Why did the chicken cross the road? Weed eater. Now that's funny. That doesn't make any sense. It's funny because it's unexpected. Well, whatever happened to it's funny because it's true. Two plus two equals four is true, but not funny. Guys? What is the solution to the equation two plus two? I don't know. What does two plus two equal? Weed eater. That's a good one. Of course, just like most movies that try to predict what the future's like, oh, they're gonna have flying cars in 2020. I mean, it's not that weird, obviously. I mean, that would just be kind of... E this says something about society. In the last five years or so, memes have not only changed because of the culture, but also just because people's humors have changed. If you take the Batman show from 1960, it was very different from the way that a lot of shows are made today, but it's still funny in its own respect. Some days you just can't get rid of a bomb. And then you take the chocolate SpongeBob episode. Good afternoon, sir. Could we interest you in some chocolate? Chocolate? Did you say chocolate? Yes, sir. With or without nuts. Chocolate? Chocolate! 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 Not even joking. It's a masterpiece. I love that. The person who made Batman thought of this joke and uh, executed it very well. The people who make Spongebob, I'm sure they were just sitting around and they, they were just kind of thinking, wouldn't it be funny if we made this guy just go CHOCOLATE?! CHOCOLATE?! And in my opinion, they're both very funny. I like them a lot and I like both of the shows but they're funny in different ways, and that's how humor has changed. That's why sometimes you'll show your parents a meme or something like that, and they'll be like, that's dumb. So what do you think the memes are gonna be like 20 years from now? Without a doubt, they're gonna be very, very different, and we'll be able to look back then, and look back to now, and we'll be able to see what has changed. Just like looking back 20 years from now, and being able to see the difference between memes. And one of the cool things that memes also tell us about culture or history, it's that you can look back at a meme that was posted at a time, which I already talked about, and you can kind of pinpoint what was going on. For instance, I could just make a meme right here. I could say, when you find out Shrek 5 is gonna come out, when you find out Shrek 5 is gonna be delayed because of coronavirus, then people, however long in the future, will be able to look back at that and be like, oh, that's when they made Shrek 5, even though you could probably just check Wikipedia. But you can tell people were maybe excited that Shrek 5 was going to come out. And speaking of Shrek, I think that one of the reasons that Shrek did so well is because people picked it up very fast and thought that it was just hilarious and started making memes about it. That pretty much boosted popularity for the movie in later years and it kept it going. I uh, said I would touch on this later. A meme that I think is going to be around for at least quite a long time after this is um the rick what's, what's it called the rick uh, 
What the heck is it? Anyway. Boom.